Would you agree the world is seriously screwed up and some things and some people need to change? Social injustice is rampant. Our tax system is seriously flawed. We're reminded on a regular basis of people that are in positions of authority that are abusing that authority, such as sometimes police officers. Certainly, oftentimes we see it with political figures and and so forth. We see it in the workplace with people that are in authority. In the, well, let's face it, the government and media are, are they're provoking people to uh, division. They're causing division among us citizens. And, and, you know, the average person just feels powerless to do anything about it. It causes a fight or flight reaction, and uh, neither one of those is necessarily appropriate. The big question is, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? I'm going to give you a message today titled, Love, Forgiveness, and Judgment. This is from Luke 3, 7 through 18, is where I'm pulling this message from. You know, with Christmas, just a couple of weeks away, it would be natural to talk about the events leading to Jesus' birth. However, today we're going to look at an event that happened roughly 30 years after Jesus' birth. Well, here's the scene. It's the Middle East. It's Roman territory. Social injustice is rampant. Authority figures such as tax collectors and Roman soldiers, are, as well as political and religious leaders, are taking advantage of the common folk. They're doing this for, for personal gain, for greedy reasons. Social tension is causing division among the people. You know, the, the Jews have their religious sects that are, are causing division. There's the division between the Romans and the, the Jews and the Gentiles and the Jews. It's just a big mess. The average citizen is powerless to do anything that would bring about positive change. And all the while... The Jews, that is, the chosen people of God, are at least trying to live up to expectation of their law. Well, in steps, a new figure is John the Baptist. He begins a ministry that's new and different. It involves getting baptized in water and has become popular among the Jews. Now, on a personal note, John the Baptist is one of my favorite Bible characters. He's bold, fearless, and unwavering. You know, John the Baptist was the only child of the priest, Zechariah. He came from a family line of priests, therefore he was naturally in a priest. And, and priests were not poor people as, as the, the law provided housing, food, clothing. All their needs were provided for when people followed the law. And uh, yet, we can find that while preaching and baptizing along the Jordan River, John the Baptist chose to subsist, to subsist, to eat only wild honey and locusts. And it makes me wonder if this was uh, food of extreme poverty, or was he just relying on provision from God? I really don't know. By the way, John the Baptist was also the earthly cousin of Jesus. When we talk about the Christmas story, which, which I plan to do here next week, we find that John the Baptist is only six months older than Jesus. And although he's born to parents that were well above childbearing age, other than that, John's not associated with any miracles. None, not, not even casting out demons. Interestingly enough, instead of wearing priestly garments, he wore a coat of camel hair, had a leather belt around his waist. He resembled and dressed the prophet Elijah. And see, in those times, by the way, in those times, the way a person dressed indicated their status, indicated a lot about them. And, and certainly... Uh, John's didn't look like what a priest looked like. 
Well, John's message was simple and to the point. It was repent and be baptized of your sins. And be baptized. Repent of your sins, rather. Repent of sins and be baptized was the message. And Luke 3, 4 through 6 tells us this about John the Baptist. As it's written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough way smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. That was the purpose of John the Baptist. That was the whole, his whole ministry. This is what God had him born for, what he prepared him for. And it was a short ministry, but a powerful one. And here's what it says in the passage that this message is coming from today. Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him. By the way, I'll point out these were Jews. It says, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then, the crowd asked. John answered, anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none. And anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you're required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and the fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the barn. He will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. First point I'll make from this passage is, love includes speaking hard truth. He called these people a brood of vipers. To them they understood the reference, children of the devil. This is a reference to Genesis 3 where Satan, the tempter, the snake, the tempter, had deceived Eve. And he's calling them a brood of vipers, deceivers, and deceived both. And it's a hard truth that punishment waits the unrepentant. It's a hard truth that religious rites will not save you. Going to church isn't enough. Getting baptized doesn't bring salvation. Following religious rules do not prove a repentant heart. Eternal security is not found in heritage. Oh, I've gone to church my whole life. My parents went to church. Doesn't matter. That's not what, that doesn't cut it. Heritage doesn't sanctify. See, the descendants of Abraham were God's chosen people, and yet John tells them they got nothing to brag about. He says in verse 8, for I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children of Abraham. Notice who was referenced in this. Similar story is, is also referenced. Um, and it says that it was the Pharisees and Sadducees. It was the people that, that were referenced in this passage that were not liked. The Jews that were serving the, the Roman army as soldiers. The tax collectors working for the Roman government. These were Jewish people. Let me ask you, who do you choose to villainize? Democrats? Republicans? 
news media. In his love for us, God provided a way for all people to be saved from the coming wrath. We have no bragging rights before God. It doesn't matter what your political or religious affiliation is if you haven't gotten right with God. Second thing I want you to see is forgiveness follows repentance. Many of us feel insecure about the future. Many of us feel insecure, uncertain about today. And we ask the question, what should we do? What should we do? The answer is repent. That's the first word, first thing of the gospel message is to repent. Change your ways. It's not something you can do on willpower. You have no ability in your own self to do this. Well, John gives some concrete examples of a changed life. If you have extra clothing, share with someone in need. Someone that has nothing. If you have food, share with someone without. We tend to be really good about this during the Christmas season. But don't read the, into it what is not there. Don't, don't read extra into it. Not, John doesn't say give to the lazy. The person that doesn't want to work, another part of the Bible says don't let them eat. Nowhere does scripture indicate that having abundance is wrong. Why, Abraham had plenty of abundance. And, and we can talk about many other great biblical characters of faith, men, people of faith that had plenty of abundance. And it's not suggested, suggested to forget preparation for future needs. This isn't saying, hey, instead of putting aside money for retirement, spend that money to help the poor in the community. It's not saying that. It doesn't say that anywhere. What is stated is that it's God's will for people to care for other people. We see people that are in need. We see hurting neighbors. We see the lonely. We see the lost. It's our responsibility, those of us that call ourselves followers of Christ, it's our responsibility to care for them. Notice that John doesn't tell the tax collectors or the soldiers to quit their jobs. Hey, maybe you're in a job where it's not viewed well by outsiders. I, I mean, I understand that. Maybe you work for the IRS. Maybe you work for, maybe you're a used car salesman. I don't know. Just throwing out examples. But we all have an opportunity to do good with whatever job we're in. On the other side, all of us can also face temptation to use our given position for greedy reasons. We're not called to quit. We're not called to run away from the world. But we're also not called to, to fight it in the traditional sense. We're called to be people of peace. Bring peace. To, to show the world what a repentant life really looks like through our actions, through our heartfelt actions. The third thing I'll point out is the full gospel includes judgment. As an AG pastor, I frequently hear the phrase full gospel, full gospel. And, and usually when I hear that phrase, I know they're referring to... Uh, uh, things like speaking in tongues and, and while that's clearly in the Bible, full gospel includes judgment. You can't have the full gospel and only talk about love and peace and comfort. That, that's not the full gospel. It's a desire to focus on love and forgiveness, but the gospel message includes the truth of judgment. Now listen, Jesus came to earth because God so loved the world. Jesus Christ freely 
offers forgiveness of sin. That's, that's great news. But let's never forget that Jesus also came to judge. 2 Timothy 4.1 tells us Christ Jesus will judge the living and the dead. Catch that. Look again at Luke 3.15-18 if, if you happen to be following with your Bible. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering if they're in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in the, his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. Gospel means good news, and it includes judgment. Judgment on the unrepentant. The way to avoid the punishment is to repent. Trust in the Lord. Live in submission to God. Listen, we go to church to worship and learn. That's, that's our purpose of that religious rite. We are baptized as an outward symbol of an inward change. That's the purpose of that religious rite. We show compassion for our fellow man because of a changed heart. That's a fruit of repentance with the help of the Holy Spirit living inside us. We can change a culture through prayer and peacefully working for change. The world is a messed up place. You know that. I know that. But let me leave you with this. Someone needs to change. I am someone. God bless.